what is up kids welcome to part four of our armor of god series i'm just so excited now to continue with this series and learn more about our spiritual armor as christians so guys for those of you that are joining us for the very first time we are currently working through ephesians 6 verse 13 to 17. now just to make sure that everyone is on the same page Let's quickly go through the six pieces of the armor of God that we can find in Ephesians 6. Now, I want you guys now to say them out loud with me as they come up on the screen. Are you guys ready? Awesome. Let's go through them. First, we have the belt of truth. Then we have the breastplate of righteousness. Then next, we have the shoes of the gospel of peace. Then the fourth one is the shield of faith. Then next, we have the helmet of salvation and then lastly we have the sword of the spirit <laughs> well done everyone thank you now for helping me go through the six pieces of the armor of god now so far in our series we have looked through the belt of truth the breastplate of righteousness and the shoes of the gospel of peace now unfortunately there's not enough time in today's lesson to go through all of them in detail again so if you have missed one of the previous lessons, please make sure to go and watch it. But in short, guys, the belt of truth is made completely out of truth. But guys, not any kind of truth. It's made from the ultimate truth. Now, guys, the ultimate truth is God's word. Now, to help us wear the belt of truth, we need to do the following three things. Number one is read God's word every day. Number two, memorize scriptures. And number three, always tell the truth. Now, next we had the breastplate of righteousness. And the breastplate of righteousness is there to protect our emotional and spiritual hearts in our battle against our enemy. Now, the word righteousness means to be in right standing with God. But unfortunately, because of sin, we are unrighteous. And the only way to be made righteous before God is through Jesus. Now, that's where our four steps came in that we need to follow so we can make sure that we have the breastplate of righteousness on. Let's quickly say them together. Number one, realize we all have sinned and fall short of God's standard. Number two, accept that Jesus paid the price for our sin on the cross. Number three, confess your sins to God and ask Him for forgiveness. And then lastly, number four, know that God has forgiven you and you are righteous because of Jesus. Now, let's move on to the shoes of the gospel of peace. The shoes of the gospel of peace is made from the good news of Jesus and what he has now done for us on the cross. And when we give our hearts to Jesus, we automatically get the shoes of the gospel of peace. But guys, to keep them on or to take them off is entirely up to us. You see, if we seek God's will for our lives in everything that we do, He will now lead us with His peace down the right path. But if we don't follow God's way and we're not led by His peace, we basically take off the shoes of the gospel of peace and we follow our own path. And that's when we bump our toes and we get hurt. Now, the way we get led by God's peace is by praying and reading the Bible. Now, a part of the shoes of the gospel of peace is also being ready to share the good news of Jesus with others as Jesus leads you to do so. Now, once again, guys, this was just a very quick summary of the first three pieces of the armor of God. So if you missed one of these lessons, guys, please make sure to go watch these lessons as we talked about each piece in much more detail. Now, let's move on and talk about the next piece of God's armor, and that is the shield of faith. In Ephesians 6 verse 16, it says the following. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Now guys, when we read Ephesians 6 verse 16, we see that the devil isn't playing around here. And it just once again confirms we as Christians are in a spiritual battle. Now, I know flaming arrows might sound very scary, but guys, don't worry. That's exactly why God gave us the shield of faith. Because with the shield of faith, we can stop and extinguish all the flaming arrows that our enemy tries to shoot our way. Now, 
As you guys know, to better understand the armor of God, we first need to look at what the armor of a Roman soldier looked like. So let's quickly look at it. Now, as you guys can see, a Roman soldier's shield was actually huge compared to a normal sized shield. Now, the reason why their shield was so big was because it had to protect their entire body when they got attacked with a sword or an arrow and all other kinds of harm that maybe came their way. Now, because it protected their entire body from their opponents, it obviously had to be very strong. So it could withstand the attacks and that's why it was made now from wood, metal and thick leather. Now, I'm sure you guys can understand that a piece of armor that is able to protect and shield your entire body is very important when it comes now to your armor. Now, just a fun fact, the most famous and talked about part in a Roman soldier's armor is their shield. Because you guys see, the Roman soldiers did this thing with their shield called a shield wall. And because they did this, it made them much stronger than their opponent. Now, a shield wall is basically when they took their shields and they put them right next to each other to make one big shield like you can see here in the pictures. Now, this shield wall that they made was now used in two different ways. The first one was when they needed protection from all sides because maybe something was being thrown at them and they were like being attacked with arrows or something like that. And the second way they used it was when they needed to push their opponent back to gain ground. Now, because the Roman soldiers used their shield in this way, it gave them an advantage in the battle. Now, guys, in the same way, the shield of faith is such an important part of our armor. You see, faith is huge and it can protect us in so many ways. And when we use it with other believers, we are actually an unstoppable force. Now, when it comes to the shield of faith, we can clearly see that it's made completely out of faith. So let's look at what faith is so we can better understand what the shield of faith is and how it protects us. Guys, faith is basically believing and trusting God 100%. Now, <laughs> that might sound very easy and all of us immediately want to say, well, I trust God and I believe in Him, so that means I have faith. Well, yes and no. You see, it's easy to say, I trust God, but will we trust God even when everything in our life is going wrong? You see, faith is not just trusting God because your life is perfect. Faith is completely trusting God, no matter how bad things get in the natural. It's believing God's word above what's happening around you. You see, the Bible explains faith like this in Hebrews 11 verse 1. Now, faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. You see, guys, those words, what we do not see, is very important. Because faith has nothing to do with what we see in the physical. It has to do with what God's word says and us believing and trusting his word no matter what. Faith is being confident that God will come through for you even though your circumstances say something else. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7 says the following, For we live by faith, not by sight. So guys, in other words, to live by faith, we can't be focused on the natural. We need to be focused on God and what His Word says and trust Him wholeheartedly. Now, let me ask you guys this. Do you guys now trust a stranger? <laughs> Probably not, right? And why is that? Because you don't know them? Yes. Now, this is why many of us struggle to trust God. Many of us don't know God. And that's why we have so little faith. Because you don't trust someone you don't know. So how do we get to know God so we can grow our faith and trust Him wholeheartedly? Well, guys, we need to actually make time for God and spend time with Him. And in this time, we need to pray and read our Bibles so we can get to know God more. So 
now the question comes in, how do we even use the shield of faith? Now, to better understand how to use the shield of faith, let's first look at what our enemy is attacking us with. A Bible verse in Ephesians 6 verse 16 says that our enemy will try and attack us with flaming arrows. Now, let me give you guys an example of what flaming arrows might look like so you guys can see how to use the shield of faith. Let's say now, for example, the enemy tries to attack you with sickness and you get a serious illness that can't be cured and things aren't looking good for you at all. Now, in the natural, things look really bad, right? But to fight off this flaming arrow, you need to have faith. So you can't afford to look at the natural. So first off, to use the shield of faith, you need to stop focusing on the sickness and that there's no cure. Then you need to shift your focus to God and what He has to say. And once you know what God has to say, you need to believe and trust Him wholeheartedly. Now, for the sake of this example, let's look at what God's Word says about sickness. John 10 verse 10 says, The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. So guys, here we can see that it's our enemy that brings all these bad things like sterling our health. And it's not from God. In fact, God wants us now to have life in abundance. Let's see what else God's word has to say. Isaiah 53 verse 5. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him and by his wounds we are healed now guys this verse is talking about how jesus died on the cross for us so we can be set free from sin and sickness and receive what god has for us which is healing you see when it says by his wounds we are healed it means because of the price jesus paid for us on the cross we can be healed let's actually now read one more verse James 5 verse 15 and the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well the Lord will raise them up if they have sinned they will be forgiven wow guys how awesome is this verse a prayer in faith is all it takes to be healed so guys that's not how we take up our shield of faith by doing what we just did you don't focus on the natural and then you go and you read what God's word has to say about your situation. And that then builds your faith so that when you pray, things will start happening. And the flaming arrows that the devil thought was going to hurt you, you just extinguished by trusting and receiving what God has for you. Now, another example of how we can use our shield of faith is when we use it with someone else. You see, let's use sickness again now as an example. Let's say someone you know gets sick and the doctor says to them things aren't looking good. Now remember how the Roman soldiers sometimes use their shield to make a shield wall? Well guys, sometimes we need to use our shield of faith with others to make a shield wall. Because you see, we as the body of Christ are stronger together and God never called us to fight our battles alone. And that's why we need to put our faith together and trust God together for things. You see, maybe your friend doesn't have enough faith to fight off the enemy's flaming arrows. But that's where you can stand with them and help them to extinguish the enemy's flaming arrows by putting your shields together. Matthew 18 verse 19 to 20 says the following. Again, Truly, I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything they ask for, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three gather in my name, there am I with them. So, in other words, guys, we need to help each other in the spiritual battle, especially those that don't have enough faith to stand alone. Because when we pray and ask God for things together, God promises in His Word that He will answer our prayers and that He will be with us. 
So I hope you guys now have a better understanding of how we need to use the shield of faith and just how important it is to fight off our enemy's flaming arrows. So guys, from now on, I want you guys to focus on God and not the natural. And I want you guys to truly start building your faith so you can trust God in every situation. And remember, the only way you can trust someone is if you know them. So guys, get to know God by spending time with Him and reading your Bible. Now, let's move on to our craft so we can remember this important piece of our armor. Wow guys, our little monkeys are starting to look so good with the armor on. I can't believe we actually only have two pieces left to put on them and then they have the full armor of God on. Now, if you are new to our series and you haven't completed the first three lessons, I want now to encourage you guys to go back and watch them because our lessons and our crafts follow up on each other. So if you missed one, your craft is going to be incomplete. Now, as you guys know, to download the page you would need now to do your craft of today, all you need to do is go to the description of today's video and click on the blue link where it says, here is today's craft link. Now, before we pray and say goodbye, let's first get on our feet and sing the Armor of God song together. <laughs> Ephesians 6, verse 14 through 17. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist. With the breastplate of righteousness in place. And with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all
guys, I just love this song so much. It's really becoming one of my favorite songs. And I hope you guys love it just as much as I do. Now, unfortunately, we are at the end of our lesson. So let's quickly close with prayer. Thank you, Jesus, for helping us get through today's lesson so we can learn more about your word and the shield of faith. Please help us to remember today's lesson so that we will know how to fight off the enemy's flaming arrows. And Lord, as we spend time with you and read your word, please help us to get to know you like we have never known you before so we can grow our faith and trust you no matter what we face. Please help us to also always walk by faith and, and not by sight. In Jesus' name we pray this. Amen. Well, guys, that's our lesson for today. I hope you guys learned a lot in today's lesson. And I hope you guys are now ready to take up your shield of faith. See you guys again next week for part five in our Armor of God series. Bye, everyone.